Hello, and welcome to Scott's Odyssey. In a previous episode, we talked about the ghost town of Bennington, a small village created to house the Irish laborers of the railroad. The namesake of Bennington stuck when the Pennsylvania Railroad had put a line through this area that had a significant curve in the rails, calling it Bennington's Curve, or sometimes Benny's Curve. The significance of this site is forever written into history, as this is the site where a great tragedy of epic proportions railed the United States and the safety of transportation industry. Here we are at Bennington's Curve, the site of the ill-fated Red Arrow. See you in a minute. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, I hope this episode gives you more knowledge of the history behind the Red Hour disaster and the Bennington Curve. If you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard. Please take a moment to click subscribe for more of this journey through Odyssey stories of who we once were. It costs you nothing but a click and I assure you, it will give you continuous adventures in return. On Tuesday, February 18th, 1947, around 3.15 a.m., the elite passenger train number 68, the Red Arrow, was on its way through the Allegheny Mountains at Bennington Curve, just a few miles before the Horseshoe Curve. The Red Arrow's consist was 14 cars, 278 people, and the train's irrefutable reputation of punctuality was in jeopardy because, for the very first time, she was running an hour late. Bennington Curve is right near the highest point of the Pennsylvania Railroad. The Harrisburg Station is at 310 feet above sea level, and when you travel the 200 miles to Altoona, you ascend to 1,174 feet. From Altoona Station to the Bennington Curve, the rail climbs 100 feet per mile for the next 12 miles to 2,200 feet above sea level. Right before reaching the Bennington Curve, the train passes through the New Portage Tunnel, a three-tenths of a mile long tunnel known as the oldest of three side-by-side -side tunnels on the main line. Consequently, although the tunnels are named the New Portage Tunnels, they are more commonly referred to as the Galitzin Tunnels, which travel underneath Galitzin and Tunnel Hill directly crossing the Eastern Continental Divide. These tunnels operated from 1852 until 1995 when they were closed and replaced by the immediately adjacent Allegheny Tunnel that was tall enough to accommodate double stack container cars. When exiting the east side of the new Portage Tunnel, the train begins descent from the 2,200 feet of elevation into a one mile downhill known as the Slide to Bennington Curve. For the railroad, percent of grade is kept at 1% or less, but this part of the railroad was an exception where the grade goes up to 2.4%. The rail requirements were to keep the locomotive at or below 30 miles per hour. Because of this, great attention to speed as you approach a curve is extremely important. But there were no speedometers on trains at this time. So speed was usually calculated by a stopwatch and a mile marker, which is not the best condition for a train traveling down a one mile stretch from the Allegheny Plateau and into the Allegheny Front on a track dropping nearly 500 feet in elevation as it enters a tight turn. Let me know in the comments below if you have stories or information regarding the people surrounding the events of the Red Arrow disaster. Tell me your family stories or if you know about other things regarding the Red Arrow that you feel people should know about. 
my research is limited only by the information that people don't share openly. Help me break that barrier and let's share the history and culture of who we once were. As is normal for this part of Pennsylvania, the early mornings from about 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. are heavily laden in fog. It is believed by the statements of trained personnel. The train engineer of the Red Arrow slowed the cars of the train, but not the speed of the engine. When approaching the Bennington curve in the fog, he noticed that the throttle of the engine was still at half open position and the train was accelerating. He quickly closed the throttle lever to slow the engine, but by that time it was too late. The speed of the train was estimated to be in excess of 65 to 75 miles per hour. The finest passenger train of the United States derailed and plunged over the cliff to the valley floor below. As told to the Altoona Mirror after the incident, Chester J. Bolesky, a 17-year-old sailor returning home from the war stated, people started screaming and I braced myself against the windowsill. Gary Clare said, all of the thousands of pieces of mail were scattered over the hillsides. Because of the location of the derailment on the mountain here, there was no way to get rescue crews or ambulances to this site. Doctors and nurses, they piled into trains that traveled along the set of undamaged tracks in order to get to this crash site. Out of the 278 people on board, only 25 were killed and 138 seriously injured. Was February 18th on the Pennsylvania line. In the year of 47, some were glad to be alive. Detroit to New York City, never knowing of their fate. And through the curve at Bennington was ball in 68. Jim Kelly got the call that morning while he was getting dressed. The switchboard operator's news was trouble at its best. Kelly grabbed his brownie box and headed to the site. What he saw would petrify his slumber every night. Rolling down the mountain in the February rain on a midnight ride to glory. Although there are no physical remnants of this great accident, stories tell of metaphysical remnants that live on till this day of what remains left behind by the Red Arrow. As local lore tells, the echoes of the 1947 crash still linger. Specifically, the tale tells us that on cool nights, and especially on the anniversary of the crash, people hear the sounds of screeching metal and the tremendous crashing and thud of tons of steel and iron of this passenger train hitting the bottom of the mountain, followed by the screams of fear and pain, and then the sound of total silence, as if a requested moment of reflection has fallen upon the valley. Regardless of the stories and the lore, there is no escaping the fact that a transportation nightmare that spawned a new age of safety for the railroad was born at this location on Tuesday, February 18th, 1947.